All right, tonight we're going to take a look at the uh, chemistry of life. This ends up being chapter two in your textbook, basically just a uh, review of some basic chemistry, a couple of terms uh, to refresh your memory on. We will be working with some of this stuff in class as well. Uh, you can see up in the uh, upper right hand corner, you'll see the page numbers and how it uh, connects to the textbook for you in case you're struggling with a few of these concepts still. So some basic terminology from chemistry class. First off, ions. Ions are any atom that has either gained uh, or lost an electron. That then, of course, makes it a charged atom. So an ion is a charged atom with either a plus or a minus charge. A couple of atoms that you see here, sodium atom, uh, this one right now has both the same number of protons and electrons with 11. Uh, it will likely want to lose an electron because it only has one electron in its outer uh, orbital in that outer val valence shell. And so if it should lose that electron, it looks like it's going over here to this atom. If it loses it, it would have one less electron and therefore have more positives than negatives and have a little bit of a positive charge to it. The chlorine atom, on the other hand, would love to get just one more uh, electron to make a full set of eight, part of that octet rule stuff, uh, a full set of eight electrons in that outer valence shell. And it goes then from having 17 protons and 17 electrons. If it gains an electron, it gets an extra electron. Therefore, it's a little bit negative. You can see uh, I've got a hyperlink here. I'm not going to click on this one right now. I will connect it up for you. Uh, right underneath this lecture uh, so you can uh, see a couple of other uh, animated tutorials that go along with some of this chemistry of life stuff. Next step is really to look at some of the important bonds in biological molecules, which are the ones that we're going to focus on the most. And again, they are pretty much the ones that you recognize from chemistry class. The classic ionic bond is an association of two ions that have opposing charges. And so the ionic bond itself, classic one, is a sodium chloride, NaCl. Uh, the Na gets the plus charge and the Cl gets the minus charge, like we saw in the last one, when it transfers an electron. And as we've probably learned in the past, opposites do attract and will be attracted together. So as the electron gets transferred from one place to the next, it does cause then uh, the, the positive charge, uh, on, on this atom, negative charge in this atom, opposites will attract, and that association will then want to hold it together. I do have a little animation that I'll show you here. This is a basic um, sodium uh, reaction. I'm going to take some solid sodium, put it in with some chlorine. So if I drop that into the chlorine gas, we get a very reactive of uh, violent reaction uh, occurring. And if we zoom in on that reaction, what is actually happening? You can see the uh, transfer of some electrons, the formation of some ions, and then the association of the plus and minus uh, is, is formed there. And what is formed? Well, that forms the sodium chloride, the NaCl, on the bottom of that. Back to important bonds in biological molecules. Another classic one would be the covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are just a, an association of sharing a pair of electrons. It can form a single, double, or triple bond, so you can share multiple electrons in that pair, or multiple pairs of electrons, I should say. They have the ability to be polar or non-polar. Non we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, and a polar bond is when atoms of different elements don't exert the same pull on shared electrons due to electronegativity. And we'll have to talk about that in just a minute because you maybe don't remember that term electronegativity fully. Well, let's look at one classic example of a covalent bond. Here's a classic example of covalent bond. We have two hydrogen atoms here uh, sharing those electrons. And the thing that always got me is I always saw, you know, when you draw things on the board, and they make it look like those electrons stay in one place and they're shared nice and neatly. But those electrons are actually orbiting around each other and they're, they're being shared overall. And if you uh, refresh your memory of some of the tutorial things that we looked at in class, um, there's a lot of that sharing that goes on. We'll look at that a little bit more in class. So back to this electronegativity thing. Electronegativity is the attraction of atoms for electrons in a covalent bond. And basically, not all atoms like to share equally. Some of the classic ones that we're going to encounter uh, are sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen. 
they all have pretty high degrees of, level of electronegativity in biological molecules. So if you see sulfur, nitrogen, or oxygen in an, uh, a molecule that we're dealing with, first thing I want you to think of is they don't share the electrons equally. For example, over here we have a, a water molecule. This oxygen is electronegative, so it likes to spend more time with the electrons than these hydrogens do. That causes an unequal sharing. This uh, animation shows you a bit of how it would work. You can see the hydrogens are sharing with the oxygens, but they're not sharing equally. The oxygen spends more time with the electrons, therefore it gets just a little bit of a negative charge because it's spending more time with those negative electrons. And the hydrogens, therefore, get a little bit of a positive charge because they're spending less time with those negative electrons. It causes it to be not equal, and that is considered to be then polar. When one side gets a little bit of a positive charge, a slight positive, here they are, on the hydrogen end, and the oxygen gets a slightly negative charge. This is not ionic. There is no transfer of electrons. It is an unequal sharing. So it is a type of covalent bond when it's unequal sharing that is called polar covalent. Um, similar to the, the opposite poles of the Earth, uh, this molecule, this water molecule, has opposite poles. The oxygen and the hydrogen have slightly different charges, so they're considered to be polar in nature. That can lead to another type of bond called the hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond uh, is due to an electronegative atom of a molecule weakly interacting with a hydrogen atom on some sort of another molecule. Here we see a couple of classic examples of hydrogen bonds. A hydrogen bond is formed between these two molecules. This one has a slightly positive charge on the hydrogen because the oxygen is taking more time away with the electrons, causing this hydrogen to be a little positive. We also mentioned on the previous slide that nitrogen is also electronegative. So it is unequally sharing its electron time with these hydrogens, and therefore it is slightly negative because this is a little negative and this side is a little positive. Those opposites are attracted to each other, but there is no transfer of electrons going on here. There's also no sharing of electrons in between here. So it is not ionic, it is not covalent, but it is considered a hydrogen bond because this hydrogen is being bound to this nitrogen due to the electronegativity on each of these separate molecules. It could happen between these two small molecules. It could happen multiple times from one large molecule to another large molecule, hydrogen bond, hydrogen, hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond. And this third example down here shows us that even within the same molecule, it could fold in on itself and due to the electronegativity in these two different places, these two oxygens, it causes a possible hydrogen bond to form across from it because there's a hydrogen there that's also being uh, unequally sharing is also unequally sharing the electrons. So some hydrogens are formed there. Some hydrogen bonds are formed there. Uh, this one is again a little bit of a tutorial that goes through uh, how water is polar and how it forms some hydrogen bonds. So I again will make a connection to that for you back on uh, the Moodle page underneath this link. Uh, this just shows that water is able to make a couple of hydrogen bonds itself. It's one of the great uh, things about water. Uh, because of its polar nature, it can make lots of uh, hydrogen bonds and actually can cause a lot of the properties of water, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, next week, uh, to form. And so a little bit of positive here interacts with a little bit of negative there, hydrogen bond. Positive here, negative there, hydrogen bond. Positive here, negative here, hydrogen bond. Each water molecule can actually make now this fourth hydrogen bond between the negative here and the positive there. Again, a decent overview website that I will link up for you uh, just to kind of overview some of these different concepts. I think that's all we're going to get through uh, today. Uh, hopefully this uh, gives you just a little bit more insight to go along with some of those tutorials. Don't be afraid to, to check out the book on these different pages. And uh, we'll see you in class. Have a good one.